And now, for the Cowlitz Gamer's second adventure with the Cov. Hello, everybody. I decided I was going to do the couch commentary for a third run, but they said I can only do two in a row, so I'm going to run this one. Um, I am here with my buddy, J2Champ. What's up, everyone? How you doing? And uh, real quick, just a tiny bit about this. You probably don't know this game. This was actually a homebrew game that was developed last year for the NES um, by Lucas Kerr and MT. Uh, they, they did the, the programming and the level design. Um, Roby and Chip Jockey were the... the uh, the, the musical artist behind all of the wonderful music in this game. It's really good music. Um, did you want to give a shout out to John as well? Absolutely. Uh, the immortal John Hancock deserves a huge shout out for putting this game together. Uh, it was originally developed for uh, charitable causes, and we're happy to showcase it here at the ultimate speed gaming charitable cause uh, event. So we're going to get ready to go. Yep, and so timer won't be quite yet. Time will start in three, two, one, go. All right, so yeah, this is the Cowlitz Gamers Second Adventure. It is the second in the Cowlitz Gamers for Kids series of games. It is a single screen platformer in which uh, you navigate as Kaylee here, uh, trying to pick up these gold nuggets. Essentially, when you collect all the gold nuggets on the screen, the exit loads and you're able to move on to the next screen. It's fairly simple in concept, but gets really difficult in terms of uh, execution, especially when playing at a high level like Cove does here. Um, I discovered this game uh, about a year ago at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I met up with uh, Mr. John Hancock, and uh, he was supporting this game and trying to get people to play it, and uh, I got my hands on it and knew right away that it would be an amazing speed game. So thanks to the GDQ staff for letting us uh, showcase a not very common uh, NES homebrew game. They don't make it in the schedule too often, and we're really happy to put this on for you guys. We actually take a death warp right there. That's something that we're going to do a lot in the run to, to save time. Yeah, deaths are really quick, um, and basically the whole level, all the level design comes down to uh, navigating to a certain point to pick up the gold, and then getting as fast as you can to the exit. So if uh, if you can get back to the beginning a little bit earlier to pick up um, a little bit quicker to, to pick up more gold or to get to the exit a little faster, uh, you'll see us do that a couple times. So you'll actually see that right there, just to go up to the next level here to get that uh, next gold and head off the screen. So the game features uh, 48 levels. They're broken up into uh, groups of eight stages. And uh, each group of eight stages features kind of like a new palette swap as well as a, a new track. And uh, I love the music in this game. I think it's totally- it's really, really good. Totally rocking uh, for an NES soundtrack. So I'll try not to talk the whole time, and you guys can hear a little bit of it. I'm trying to think of any other tech we haven't talked about. Uh, for longer ropes, uh, you can do kind of a, what we call rope jumping. Yeah, you'll see that a few times. I'll point it out next time. Also, those little yellow slugs there can be really difficult to navigate around. Essentially, you have to crouch so that they jump over you instead of just avoiding them by jumping over them like you would a normal enemy. So you can see he's going to manipulate them there to drop into the spikes and basically eliminate themselves from the screen there. Very clean level there. That one's tough to do quickly. Another manipulation of the yellow slug there, and then he's going to position himself in between the zombies here so we can quickly make this cycle. Get that gold, head back over here. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Okay. That's a really, really tight trick. There. Very tight trick there to go around that zombie walk. I kind of didn't want to do it, but... No, you did it. It, it felt good. It, it felt, felt good. it felt good back here, man. All right, there's also little uh, pink teleporters um, on the map that will warp you to different points on the screen. There are also hidden teleporters that will warp you to different points on the screen. So you have to be mindful of, uh, you know, where you are and where you want to go and try to use all the elements on the screen available to you um, to get all the gold as fast as possible. There he killed the, the little golden turtle, which was hiding a piece of gold inside of him there using this galactite. Yeah, you do need to you do need to kill those golden turtles to be able to finish the level. Yeah, there's a little bit of that rope jumping we were talking about there. Let's do that a couple more times here. Take a death warp here again. Pretty much any time we need to go to the right side of the screen, oftentimes, we will end up death, death warp back to the left. Yeah, so when you do play as two players, the player one starts on the bottom left and player two starts on the bottom right. And uh, that can cause like diverging paths through the uh, through the level to get all the gold. 
Um, but in this case, since we're only doing one player for this run, um, you'll oftentimes have to go all the way to the other side of the screen to get what would normally be a player two uh, golden nugget and then death warp yourself back. Yep, so we're on the right side again, so we're going to obviously death warp. Did you talk through the difficulties for the differences? Absolutely, yeah. So there are four different difficulty levels um, in this game. There's easy, normal, hard, and ace. Uh, easy, normal, and hard are effectively the same. The only difference is uh, the number of lives that you start with and the rate at which you accumulate new lives uh, for getting uh, gold nuggets. So for us, since we're speedrunners and we like to death warp and death abuse and go fast, uh, we play on easy, which gives us the most opportunity to do that. You have more lives and you accumulate them faster. The other difficulty uh, level is ace, which is essentially um, no extra lives. You don't accumulate any extra lives, so it's you have to do a damage list run. And in this game, everything kills you in one hit. So it, it becomes an entirely different strategy, and it's, it's actually really, really difficult to even complete a run uh, in ace mode. This level is it starts to show how the game can get really hectic when there's a lot of stuff on screen and uh, the programmers handled this beautifully you know on, on an nes usually with this much stuff going on there's slowdown or flicker and there's, there's just really none of that here here he's gonna bait the yellow slug to kill himself there very nice so we're just about to the halfway point of the run at this level and one more. Yeah, so a little bit of the storyline of the game is that you play as Kaylee, um, and she has dived into the caves here to collect gold to buy fireworks for the uh, festival. And uh, she'll eventually make her way to the surface. And uh, after that, uh, there, well, we'll see what happens right here. You can squeeze in a donation yeah. too. Yeah, you got time. Perfect. Relian23 donates $5 and says, In case Cove doesn't advertise for himself, he really is a super cool dude. Kind, keeps his stream PG for families, has a great online community, and is still brutal at taking down games. Definitely give this guy some love. Thanks, GDQ staff and volunteers for the continued work. Thank you, Relian23. Awesome. Thanks. We love Cove. Uh, Big 20 champion. Uh, All-around great guy. So really glad that he was able to do another run for us. Sharaka, oh, Shar, aka The Whiff, donates $5 and says Cowlitz has the best music. Awesome game. Hi, J2 and Cove. Hey, Shar. Hi, Shar. Shar's my wife. Oh. So there's a little bit of that fine climbing there on these uh, grates. Uh, you can do the, the same kind of fine jumping strat there. This also uh, introduces some new enemies who will shoot fireballs at you. Uh, those fireballs are on a global timer. Actually, every enemy in this game is on a is uh, on a single screen global timer. So every time you load each screen, it's exactly the same. It's really, really great for practice. There's essentially no RNG in the whole game. Makes it a great speed run. Absolutely. It really just comes down to execution and how much time you're willing to put in to make sure that your route is optimized. Uh, Co put in a lot of time into optimizing this route. Um, and uh, it, it really does show. So you might be wondering, so like, how can you get a hold of this? Well, until literally yesterday, there were only about, I don't know, 50 to 100 of these copies in existence. Yeah, maybe? I think they printed 80 physical copies, and that was it. Um, but uh, Lucas and uh, MT have been working on a digital copy that they just released. And so you can find that by going to the website itch.io and searching for Cowlitz. Um, it is free. They do suggest a donation to a charity. I think they have one on their page, but seeing as we are at a GDQ, um, I think they would be totally fine if you wanted to just make a small donation to GDQ and download it and have fun with it, because it is really, really... Donate to charity, game. get an awesome game. I mean, what, what are we doing here if not, if not awesome stuff? No, awesome stuff is in January, actually. Oh, that's right. You gonna be there, Cole? Yeah. Sick. That was a really bad joke. <laughs> I rarely have good ones, but that one They're was bad, bad for even me. Yeah. All right, so here you have to wait for the uh, the turtle cycle here. Just got him with the chandelier there. Very nice. It can be really annoying if you uh, if you miss the drop on the turtle there. You just uh, have to wait for the chandelier to respawn. Yeah, it's about, I don't know, maybe four or five seconds. Yeah. Really annoying. 
and uh, oh, there are a lot of cycles in these levels like that, and essentially the level becomes maxed out because you have to wait for that cycle in order to actually complete the level. So there are minimum times essentially for these levels, a lot of which have been reached, so getting stuff like gold splits can be really tough um, when running a game like this. This level is a little annoying. This zombie gets in your way yep. all the time. But there are yeah, little... Yeah, so even even little mistakes in movement can be made up simply because you have to wait for cycles. So, you know, it, it does uh, allow you just a little bit of room for error, but again, not much. The platforming and controls in this game are are actually really, really tight. Uh, yeah, they're very It's kind of hard to, to relay that on stream, or, or really until you get your hands on it, you don't understand exactly how good it feels. There's a lot of NES games that have clunky controls or a uh, little too much gravity or sliding, and there's there's really none of that in this game. So they, they really did a good job uh, refining the, the control scheme and making sure that it was fun to play and fair. Yeah, and I actually think this this is one of my favorite two-player games that I've ever played. It's an absolutely fun time when you're yelling at you know your partner and say, "Hey, you got to get that one over here. And we're we're over oh. here," and then you have to both get off screen before you can move on with the next level. And you, you know, you're telling them to death warp, die, 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 and it, it just turns into a mess. So here we've uh, already entered the final area. Things really pick up pace. The music gets really intense, and the, the palette changes, and you can tell that the, the game is, is getting ready to uh, give you its grand finale. Yeah, these last levels are pretty tough. Yeah, Comparatively really to the first half of the game, it ups a lot in difficulty for the second half. Absolutely. And then these last ones even kind of crank it up a little more. Would you like some more donations before sure. you win? Yeah, make them make quick. Perfect. Mr. Webb donates $25 and says, just good luck. I guess that's all you need right now. Winky face. Sounds Cap donates $5 and says, good luck, Cove. One of the absolute, nice, absolute nicest guys on Twitch and an absolute legend at NES games. Was that quick enough? So there he used the hidden portal um, that was uh, in the bottom left to warp all the way to the top of the screen to get to the exit a little bit faster. Uh, it's a new optimization we got in just in the past week or so. I think. Yep. Here we're on the second to last level. Very tight platforming here with all those enemies flying overhead. Again, baiting that yellow slug and making that cycle right there. Perfect. And then this is the final stage. I'll give you a warning for time. It's not right after this stage. Just gonna go up here on the right, drop down, collect this final gold piece, and exit to the top. So time is going to be Coming up in three, two, one, time. Yo, it's up 12. Awesome, awesome, awesome run. Wow. Yeah, I think 11 there, was, 58? there was only one unintentional death, I think. That, that was fantastic. But no, I mean, thank you guys, GDQ, so much for letting. I know we don't usually get homebrew games in here, but um, this is one of the most fun homebrew games I've ever played. I'd probably put it in like my top favorite. 10 or 20 NES games overall, which is That's crazy incredible. for my guys played most of them. Um, yeah, and thanks again to the awesome developers for making such a fantastic game, MT, uh, Lucas, and of course, John Hancock for uh, putting this all together. So thank, thanks to them. Thanks again to the GDQ staff. Thanks for everyone who came out to uh, support us here. And uh, thanks to Co for putting down a, a fantastic run. Really, Sub-12 is, is really exceptional. Yo, and thanks, thanks J2 for the awesome commentary. Good time. Thanks, guys. Have a good rest of the marathon. All right. That was the Cowlitz Gamers' second adventure, run by the Cove. During that run, Shied had donated ten dollars. They were very excited to see Cove running at a GDQ event again, and they loved that game's awesome music. Melfus had donated ten dollars. They said they had to donate to cheer Cove and J2 on. They can't wait to see them again at AGDQ. Keep up the great gaming and commentating. Coming up next is Super Adventure Island, run by Gigas Blues.
If you're looking for a challenge to donate to, Spelunky HD Get Eaten still needs just over $300. And we're also only about $170 from 21,000. It would be fantastic to see that completed before the end of the next run. One of the charities that the donations to Games Done Quick Express go to is Save the Children, which invests in childhood every day in times of crisis and for our future. In the United States and around the world, we give children a healthy start, the, opportun the opportunity to learn and protection from harm. By transforming children's lives now, Save the Children changes the course of their future and ours. Last year, Save the Children worked in 120 countries and helped more than 185 million children. For more information about their programs, please visit savethechildren.org. If you're feeling an urge, to get into a bid war, Girl and Robot dress choice, the patterned blue dress, is currently $5 ahead of the plain white dress. So if you're interested in a plain white dress, get out $5 and, and then another penny, because otherwise it would be tied, and I don't know what we do with ties. So don't let that happen. I would be confused. Get those donations in now to prevent my confusion. Anonymous donates $50 with no message. Thank you, Anonymous. Another of the organizations that donations go to during GDQ Express is Doctors Without Borders, who you may recognize from Summer Games Done Quick. Doctors Without Borders, also known internationally as MSF, is an international independent medical humanitarian organization that delivered emergency aid to people affected by armed conflict, epidemics, malnutrition, natural disasters, and exclusion from healthcare in 69 countries in 2015. On any one day, thousands of individuals representing dozens of nationalities can be found providing assistance to people caught in crises around the world. They are doctors, nurses, logistics experts, administrators, epidemiologists, laboratory technicians, mental health professionals, and others who work together in accordance with MSF's guiding principles of humanitarian action and medical ethics. The organization received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1999, and your donations to GDQX could support their work. If you make a donation of $10 or more, you could have a chance to win the Shovel Knight soundtrack on CD. Just That's nice. I just wanted you to know that. That could happen for you. <laughs> 